Hey guys, this is Chef A, and this is Sophomore Skills video. I'm not going to number it today. I'm just going to call it Sophomore Skills Sandwich Spreads. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. As you know, we've been going through sandwiches, and uh, we did breads. Uh, yesterday you did breads. Today we're going to talk about the spreading, the spread element to this. But before we go into that, I wanted to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions in this video that you'll be able to answer on the worksheet. And the first one is, this area obviously has been cleaned and sanitized before we started working on it. And I want you to give me the steps of cleaning and sanitizing. That's question number one. What are the steps to clean and sanitize a work surface? Let's go on. The second part of that question for your worksheet is, we also discussed food contact surfaces. Remember when we discussed uh, sanitation and safety, it wasn't just something that we're leaving on the shelf. We have to use this every day in the kitchen. So as far as our um, food contact surfaces, define what a food contact surface is. Let's go on. The first one that we're going to do today, and we talked about this in our lecture, is compound butter. We say compound butter can be used as a spread, and I'm going to show you how to make it right now. In the bowl is one pound of butter, salted. And in this particular case, we're going to use a couple different um, pieces of equipment today. The first one we're going to use is the mixer, and we have the paddle in. What we're going to do is pull it up. All right, a little too fast, we're going to start. And we're going to we're going to whip the butter, and you can see once it starts cleaning the sides, it's going to be our indicator. And I'm going to scrape it down just once. What we're doing is obviously, please remember too that this was softened butter. I had this at room temperature for a little bit, just to make it a little easier in the process. Now, into this butter, we could put really many different things. Uh, we could put roasted garlic. I have some down, we're gonna use roasted garlic in a little bit later. Uh, we could put roasted garlic, we could put anything that your imagination would uh, think of. Sun-dried tomatoes. What I'm gonna just do today is I have some um, rosemary. And I have some thyme. He always has some thyme on his hand. There you go. And that's what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna really scrape it down this time. And you see that. It's always a good idea to do so because this butter is kind of sticky and it sticks to the sides. And here we go. We're gonna lower it. That was loud. Okay, so we're just scraping it down. And we're gonna gather it all up. And what is generally done in a professional kitchen? Now, quite frankly, if you're at home, you could just leave it like this and work from it. And you can see it's soft enough and it has herbs in. Let me give you a good look at it. And this could be spread on a sandwich, sandwich bread, obviously. And these flavors, as I said, you can be altered depending upon what the filling might be, etc. But the next step in the professional kitchen is, is the, would take parchment paper. Take the butter out. Take the butter out, there you go. And what you would do from here, and I'm gonna make it like a little bit of a log. And then what you would do, by using a parchment paper, is squeeze any air pockets out, etc., and roll it. 
squeeze it out a little bit more so you have nice slices. Roll it. And then once you get to this point, twist it into shape. So you have a nice log there. And then we're going to get plastic wrap. And just to you know, keep it nice and fresh, and we'll wrap it. Now, in, in our kitchen, what we do with this is, oh, of course, you would want to mark it what it was on here. You'd be doing the, in the marker. And what we would do in our kitchen is we'd, we'd freeze that until we wanted to use it. And then, of course, what you could do is just cut little slices off, like little pads of butter. That's number one. Compound butter. We're going to go down the end here, and the next one I'm going to I'm going to show you. Don't come and chip out. The next one we're going to do is roasted garlic and sun-dried tomatoes. I have sun-dried tomatoes here, and I have roasted garlic. This is roasted garlic that I made, but you've seen it in the kitchen. We make it all the time. And what we're going to do is put some of the sun-dried tomatoes. Now, listen guys, I always tell you this and it's the truth. I'm, not, I'm just putting stuff in here and I'm not measuring it. You can look up a recipe for any of these things and find it in two seconds. What we're focusing on today is not the quantities or measuring, we're focusing on technique. Here we go. And I have my roasted garlic and I'm gonna put a little bit of the oil in there because that oil has been saturated in there is very good i'm also going to put some parmesan cheese this will have to bind it a bit smells delicious doesn't i was just going to say that chef oh it does it smells great okay now what we're going to do I started by pulsing, you can pulse it. Now let's take a look at what we got. Now what you can see, it's chunky. We can go a little bit, we can even go a little further. But what we have certainly is something that is definitely spreadable. Here, I'm gonna pop it out for you so you can get a better look. If we wanted, I mean, and Chef O discussed this in the video beforehand, we could actually put a little mayo in here. But I wanted to show, I wanted to show you uh, ones without mayo. And not do everything with mayo. Some people don't like mayo. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of fat in mayo. And just healthy, this is all this was. And in this particular case, I use canola oil in that uh, garlic. So you really don't have, you have all just natural, a natural spread. It somewhat resembles mayo. I mean, it's chunkier, but it certainly resembles mayo a, a, a certain amount. Um, okay, that's number two. Now we're going to go to number three. We talked about it, and I also, please understand, I want to point that out. Let's come back here for a second. Notice, I deliberately did this. We used the mixer for the first one. In this particular case, we use the uh, Roboku, but I wanted to show you that we could use many different type of uh, equipment. And now next, we're gonna go to the burr mixer. And we talked about in our lecture, uh, when I was talking about uh, all of these elements together, that sometimes me and Chef O make a, a turkey, a turkey sandwich with uh, cranberry mayo. And so today, that's what I wanna show you, that spread. And here you see, I just have a, oh, I did it upside down. Oh no, you have to. There's a signature can of cranberry jelly. Which your, my dad loves. Your dad loves. And my wife insists on every... <laughs> Same with my dad. Um, every Thanksgiving, despite the fact that it's... I can't make a fancy one. You have to use that. And that's fine. Now, in this particular case, we're going to kick it up a little bit. And we're going to put blue cheese dressing in it. Let me get another spoon.
I think that's, is that, that's gorgonzola, right? It's not good cheese. It's like gorgonzola. Okay, so we did that. Now in this one, we are going to use mayonnaise. So do you see, I got it in there. And one of the things, let's talk about technique again. One of the things I see when people are using this burr mixer, which here's the, the mini burr mixer, take a look at that. What I see with the young students too sometimes what they do is they'll try to put it in a mixing bowl like this, or they'll put it in a wide container. If you notice, I, I deliberately picked a narrow container. And the reason why I did is because now the materials when I start burr mixing will have no place to go. We'll have a smaller area and they won't shoot out. If you put it in here, it gets too thin and you can't get it. Well, number one, you have to make sure you have enough of a, a product to make sure you're submerged. But secondarily, it spreads too wide and you don't get a good, put it in a narrowest container you can find, obviously depending upon quantity. We have other inserts, you know, you can go wider. But in this case, we're just making a little bit. So again, going back, I'm working on technique today and not measuring. put two scoops get rid of that I'm gonna disappear for a second because you will notice that he keeps everything nice and clean and he doesn't put the dirty utensils right on the table he puts it back somewhere where it's uh, in a nice bowl and stays clean I want to give it a shot of salt pepper which I forgot to bring to the table and here we go. filling when we discussed uh, filling initially and we discussed fruit so cranberries are fruit and that's what we're utilizing here today but it could be other things uh you could you could immediately obviously see this in a with a turkey sandwich because of that you know traditional cranberry but if you go with anything that you you might imagine it to go in that's number three Clear the table. There we go. That's number three. And then last but not least, again, I don't want to use mayo and everything. So what we're going to use in this one is we're going to use roasted red peppers. Now these are my canned roasted red peppers. And I'm going to use some Parmesan cheese, which I have in the container right here. And we're going to do the same technique as back here, where we're not going to add mayo to it. We're just going to burr mix it. And this, when we're actually defining this, this would actually fall in that vegetable category. We said we could use vegetables when we're making a spread. And, and a, uh, and a, obviously, a, um, a pepper is a vegetable. Here we go. And I'm allowing some of the, first off, I packed them in garlic. So I'm putting that in there too for flavor. Come on out, guys. Not the play. No, come on out. They know they're going to get chopped. Here we go. All right, that's enough. What do you think? That's enough. I don't know if that'll puree. I know, it might need more. Don't puree that.